having a platform to link them onto. So I, you know, I have the coffee and then and then link the person I'm meeting onto the cappuccino so club. I've always had to have a bit of a business mind and and share in, in, in the business. And that was sec the second time I left was to help them open in that business. But as you know, in South Africa, you know, you have a if you in, if you've got restaurants or liquor stores, I mean all the everybody needs liquor whether they're sad or they're happy but you have <laughs> and it's just been you know one of us had to be in corporate does this group get a discount <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one, well one right. of us have to be in corporate so to give our give our relationship a bit of stability <coughs> and um and one of us can take the risks and he's always you know he's, he's, he's more risk averse when i'm not working than so corporate. anybody being nice in business comes second so you need yeah. to walk in as a business person and leave your mother Mother's no. side. <laughs> um, and I've also been through um, a road of being a an academic businesswoman. Um, and but, but I think I also want to start with saying a mom first, because I've got three daughters. Um, my eldest is 23, and a 19 year old, and I've now got a 15 year old. Uh, a my youngest daughter just turned 15. The other two are overseas. I'm incredibly inspired when I walk away from the young people into the space. I try to at least give 10 minutes after I've spoken to just be around for everybody to come and chat. The, the worst thing about that level of commitment is you have to then make yourself available mm -hmm. um, for that copy date mm -hmm. and for those. And then to take it and link them on to everybody else mm -hmm. that you know. And that for me is where the magic really happens. Also to provide a special service for educational, school educational, business educations. Uh, to educate people more about scanning. Um, I'm very strong in business. I owned a business for 20 years. I built a startup into a top 20, or the top 10 in Natal. Hi, I'm Priscilla Daniels. Um, I am here from the academics world. Um, but Viola and I uh, kind of connected through some of the work that I do in community development. I'm the director of the community engagement unit at QWC. Um, I love my work. Um, I think the reason I love it is that I've moved from the very formal academic space to working with uh, community leaders and capacitating and training and facilitating some of the work. And so I, I have the, the advantage of following my passion in terms of working with adults because I think when you do training with adults, they choose to be there. Whereas with, when you're working with students, there's still this issue that they feel they're being forced to be at university, yeah. they can't see the reason. Whereas I am amazed um, when I work with community leaders, um, the amount of resilience they have, the amount of commitment, the amount of passion. And so I, I although I give a lot, I think I receive much more because I walk away and I'm energized and I am, just enthused by the innovation that people are able to bring about in community. So I think that the, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, when you start thinking about everything we're saying here is that, you know, we have to be cognizant that we represent a gender when we walk into the room. We have to be there and arrive and be confident and know what we're doing. Um, but we also need to almost start looking out for the people who could possibly be wanting further engagement because we talk a lot about this lifting while we are business. Um, I was the only woman of color sitting on the board of directors for the uh, Alpha Gas Safety Association of South Africa. I'll be little old me sitting with the board with the bosses of Afrox, BP, Total. I mean, there's all foreign multinational uh, executives there. I was loving nothing. The uh, company was very good, the company went well for a few years and then obviously it fell flat, not obviously because as a, as a, a small business owner, competing in this foreign multinational space with deep pockets was very, very daunting. Um, one thing about women in business, when, when I find that when a business goes down, women very rarely climb back up. Mm. And that's so different because men, they don't think twice. Mm. They can fail and fail and fail and they'll come back. So in the time that <clears throat> we had a bit of a setback, I had to retrench my staff, close down two depots, and then to rethink the whole situation, you know, recalculating. I then decided, fine, I've got some time in my hands, and then I went to study again, just to see if I could up my qualifications, and I did an MBA, 
and then came back into the working space. Viola and I, we've got a little, she's, I've asked her to help me in the, in the gas space to try and promote the alternative energy side of the Alpha Gas for all the vehicles. And she and I are still there spiritual time to get there, done, uh, get that going again. Uh, on a personal level, I'm a mom of four. Three of them are biological. Uh, the fourth one is an adopted girl of 18 years old. Adopted her last year. Um, very happy with my four children. Happily married. Got a single brother-in-law if anybody's interested. He's <laughs> <laughs> just arrived. We're making uh, the idea of age is really not an issue. I think it is about just showing up doing what needs to be done and following that yeah. passion and yes. then nothing can sure. stand in your way because I listen to your story and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, now if you haven't heard the message yet, you are meant for leadership. You just yeah. cannot get away <laughs> from it. <laughs> and you get into leadership by serving because yeah. the moment you are able to serve, you get lead. Yeah. So it's just very interesting how you were telling the um, story. I've learned so much from my children because, um, you know, if you're just talking about the, the social spaces, there are things that I could not understand and I think I've become a much better facilitator and teacher mm -hmm. because I listen to my children and I think the one big thing that we forget about is that you should listen more and talk less mm -hmm. because we learn so much and that we shouldn't think of age when you're looking at where you're learning or not because as I said I've learned the most from my children I mean even just I always used to tell my son, why don't you just say things? And then he said to me, but mom, you never know when somebody's standing there with a camera and taking a picture. <laughs> and then tomorrow I'm on social media and my whole life is destroyed. And I never ever thought, because mm. I didn't grow up in a space mm. where I used to have to worry about is somebody mm. taking a picture, mm. yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and do I have any control over that? Yeah. Um, and as I also uh, mentioned earlier, is, you know, both my daughter and my son was bullied in school. And social media was a big part of that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that those are the things and that is why it's so important. I like the start where we did the introduction about how do we control the narrative, mm -hmm. you know, and how do we bring about safety. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're creating a really great space. So thank, thank you. you. I do PCP centers. So we do things like um, uh, providing training to teachers. We do infrastructure updates. And then one of our projects is the Cape Town Museum of Childhood. And I um, am the outage man program manager for the Cape Town Museum of Childhood. Um, I love my job. It allows me to do whatever I really would like to. Um, so just recently, I decided I really want to do a silent protest for Child Protection Week. And I told my boss, and he's like, go ahead, do it. And we were standing at, up just outside Red Cross Hospital with our posters. And it was just great. Lots of other NGOs came and supported us. Um, so I, I would like to think of myself as a community worker. I love working within the community. Um, I love providing, working with other people and providing platforms of empowerment for youth as well. Youth development is also something I'm really passionate about. I work with another NGO called the Blue Collar Foundation, um, which was founded by the singer Jimmy Nevis. Um, so I enjoy working in that space. And I also just completed my master's degree in social development. Wow, wow. Um, but I still have some corrections to do, which is taking me a long time. <laughs> you come from Limpopo. Um, my parents are still there. Um, I grew up around strong women. Um, but I came to Cape Town and the picture is not the same. I mean, no. you enter the, the corporate world and the officers the big positions are all filled and it's between yeah. being an approachable person but also being able to put it down there and say this is what i am here to do i know how to do it i have the skill set to do it i have the expertise to do it i have the i have the background to do it mm -hmm. and i'm going to do it you know it might not make everybody in the room happy but i think you know, in my assessment, that's one of the things that we have not done well. Mm. We haven't sat down, women haven't walked into a room. So and anybody room. being nice in business comes second. Yeah. So you need yeah. to walk in as a business person and leave your mother, mother's yeah. side <laughs> at home. At home. The naturalization of 
leadership roles look like and what people have come to see as being natural within these leadership roles you know why do i have to be you know a um, a man of privilege to walk into these spaces and tell you what's what and you know in a, the short amount of time that i do and you know what does that say about me and why do we just take that as like you know everything there is to know about that space you know which is you know not not exactly the entire truth of the thing so i think what being in these roles of leadership for me does and especially being someone that's young within these roles of leadership is that i call into question i know when i walk into a room and i'm being asked to put something together and to say my piece i have to have a very strong opinion about what that is i have to be super well researched i have to be able to withstand any criticism or comments that come my way i need to think of the darkest demons that someone could pull out of the closet to to, to try and shake me to think to thinking that i am underqualified or that i don't know what i'm talking about or that i have a flimsy idea around a topic that everyone is talking about and i almost have to know twice as much and be over researched in order to kind of hold myself in that space and as you as you mentioned earlier you have to be very strong and you have to come with this air of like i'm here because i'm meant to be here mm -hmm. and i know what the hell i'm speaking about you guys are all going to question that fact but i have made sure that whatever you come at me with i'm ready to take and then everybody mm -hmm. you know leaves a little bit impressed but it's also about as you say like as we've said like speaking with confidence being able to present yourself and the only way to do that is to like you know you have to do so much inner digging of like thinking and figuring out like i'm here because i'm here because of this thing and like i'm super insecure right now like you know stand in the shower for an extra like 10 minutes even though we're in a water crisis and say i'm sorry but i really needed this to, like, <laughs> you know to like get myself to a mental emotional state to you know feel that you know yes i've done the research i know what i'm walking into this room with and like i'm gonna go in there and tell them what's what and everyone's gonna believe in me you know but like we constantly have to be doing this thing and like it's because of the community and the society that we've brought mm -hmm. been brought into and Mindset. as you've said like we don't see the people that we want to be going out because i don't look at like the head of something and be like oh yes i would love to wear that like you know suit with the like a high top i know i'm wearing like a lot of yeah. that kind of you know colored yeah. shirts kind of thing now but like you don't naturally see the people that we want to be when we yeah. grow up <laughs> yeah. we don't see it that way we will go and we'll fuss and we'll talk for 10 hours mm. before we get to the point mm. which i find <clears throat> which i find which is which i find is meant with much better they, they will walk in get to the point get their get their, their, their business done and that's that and uh, from a woman's perspective it, it is nice to chat and to get to know each other more on a personal level but i find men value their time and value themselves more than women do mm. in business and they ask for funding they ask us you know 100 percent female owned and all of that is it really helping i mean do you see the impact on be or are people just seeing it as another clutch for women Mm. In business. We speak about BAE or empowerment, we've got to be very careful of not politicizing it, mm. right? Because when, when you get appointed a role or you're in a position because you are of entitlement, mm. I mean, it becomes very quickly that you could be seen as being placed in that position mm. because, because of an entitlement, not because of you earned your, yeah. your position. So having said that, you actually have to work harder, mm. a little bit harder at that position to, to authenticate yourself for for the, for the role that you've been in. Mm. Um, because if you also don't open up those spaces, people are not going to get access, especially women. So I think it's important to facilitate access. I think then the point comes in, what do you do when you're there? Yeah. Correct. And that is where this kind of conversation is necessary. And that is where this kind of support is necessary for women mm -hmm. because there isn't, it's like motherhood, there's no training that you can really, you can go for your MBA, you can do all of those things. But, it, but the experience, yeah. we as women need to provide that and mm -hmm. we need to provide it in an honest way. Mm -hmm. We need to tell the truth. We need to mm -hmm. say, like you've said, I mean, I value being a mother, but I need to then consciously tell myself, look, I'm going into this meeting now. The situation mm -hmm. is different. I need to put on my other hat. I need to kind of put myself in another box. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that that is not as valuable to me, okay. but for the space, mm -hmm. I need to do it in this way. Mm -hmm. And maybe we don't have to become like the men. 
I think we can still have the conversations. Right. Maybe we should just then first do the business first mm -hmm. and then say, okay, like they go to the pub, well, let's go for coffee. Yeah. Yes. You know, so it's not that it's mutually exclusive that we can't do both. Mm -hmm. I just think uh, it is harder for us as women, it's more difficult, yeah. because we represent women. Mm -hmm. Men don't come in and represent the whole male species. Yes. Yes. But we come into all our spaces and like we see race, they will see women that you're a woman first. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you come with all that baggage, preconceived mm -hmm. ideas about women. Uh, you have to deal with cultural things. You have to deal with socialization. Yes. Um, yeah. And so those are the things. But I, I, I think we need the foot in the door. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think we, we, can, we can move away from that because yeah. it is difficult for women to be successful. And so we have to provide access. But, but in representing that gender, it, it also has its own challenges because I know, like, you know, how do you how do you now stop being the only woman around the table because for many of us we find we walk into a room and we're the only woman at the table i mean i sat on a board where i was the only woman on that board and the chairperson would still say gentlemen come to order and she was giggle about the fact that that means i don't have to come to order um, but but how do you how do you move away from that to where you constantly you know being singled out in this very apologetic accommodating way mm -hmm. like you know okay sorry sorry but well, you know can we say something you know would you mm -hmm. like to say how do you actually now start being this voice that is sort of on par with all these male voices or is it a good thing that our voices still seem to be different you know where men are still going oh sorry uh you know by Ola and, and would you like to say something and, and what do you from a from your perspective think mm -hmm. um it's easier so I found it easier with the the male managers that you can go, but you can't relate because um, they are not mothers. They are don't have like they don't play as big a role in the families. You come back, you cook, you you go to work, you tired. But it's 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 just not the same. So like Viola, you have a child, and that's what I want women in leadership to be. And you, somebody that you can easily approach and say, um, can you be my mentor? I want to be where you want to be. But you find them to be still trying to prove themselves, still yeah. trying to find validation in the workplace and the positions that they mm -hmm. are. So yeah, for me, it's that you need somebody who is confidence is very important, but still approachable. Mm -hmm and still willing to pull or be able to pull other women up to do because almost consciously pull them aside and say to them you for the, your own survival need to become more confident about who you are forget where you live forget the fact that you share a room with five other people forget all of that you need to become more confident because confidence is where it all starts um be able to to just stand you know head above the rest in terms of an interview just being able to to go in there confidently and sell yourself so that you can start a career um it's it's just become something i've become very very aware of recently that that it's it's it is a confidence issue i mean i look at these girls and 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 the media is not helping us but flashing all these these images and i know there are some corporates that are doing as much as they can to try and dispel that myth of this is what a woman, a successful woman looks like, you know, and um, just having a conversation with Shay talking about being successful versus being satisfied with yourself. Mm -hmm. Success is measured by other people, but mm -hmm. satisfaction is measured, measured internally. Are you satisfied with the result that you have? Mm -hmm. and, and moving us from this, you know, success is the measure to satisfaction is the measure. Um, is something that we're going to have to consciously do with our ladies. Um, you know, and, and if I look at the new entrants in the market, when you guys look at where you want to be, what is it that are some of the sort of characteristics of women in leadership? Thanks. Uh, my name is Donna, and uh, I came to South Africa in 1997. So I always regret that I can't do a South African accent because <laughs> <laughs> most of my adult life is here. Um, and I guess I also do multiple things, but first to say is I'm a mom, my kids are in the room next door, I'm hoping they don't make noise. Um, they're 10 and 13, and uh, my daughter is a, a Western Province hockey player, so we were at a parl all week, and she's also a Western Province swimmer. 
Oh, oh, sure. yeah, she's oh. queen apples. I had to brag first. But <laughs> <laughs> my son's adorable and he's friends with Shay. He plays the guitar. Um, so I'm a mom first, and I guess uh, just I know this is a group about business women and academics, but I always wanted to be a mom with four kids, yeah. and that's not where my life ended up. But um, I just pictured myself raising a whole gaggle of kids, and that was going to be my life, and I was very excited about that. But life changes. Um, and I'm both an academic. I was at Stellenbosch for 10 years as a lecturer, and uh, I'm now with the University of Johannesburg. And I oversee um, all women, ironically, but uh, students, PhD and doctoral students, trying to just get them through the system. Um, so that's, I really enjoy that in all different kinds of, of fields. Um, and as an academic, I, I published a book this year um, by Guilford Press, and it's about doing what I'm I do. I'm incredibly inspired when I walk away from the young people into the space. I try to at least give 10 minutes after I've spoken to just be around for everybody to come and chat. The, the worst thing about that level of commitment is you have to then make yourself available mm -hmm. um, for that copy date mm -hmm. and for those, and then to take it and link them on to everybody else mm -hmm. that you know. And that for me is where the magic really happens.